1996. Perhaps one of the most important dates in my guest today's <laughs> life, Debbie Castaneda, the one and only Miss Columbia. Today, we're going to talk about some, wow, some very exciting topics uh, up to and including certainly her experience as Miss Columbia, for those of you that are not aware of who Debbie is, um, and then also some other things along the way. So I was going to say, let's start with the Forbes article and your Quote, I wanted to reveal all my beauty secrets to achieve fast and long-lasting results to my clients, end quote. However, what I really want to do today is start back to this one particular defining moment of your life, which is this. Tell me what you were feeling in 1996 as the <laughs> judges announced, Debbie, you are Miss Columbia. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I was participating and it was very excited. I was very young. I was uh, turning 19 years old. I was 18 when I was in Bogota. Uh, Bogota is the capital of Colombia. I was participating in this Bogota. So you have one year to participate to, you know, to prepare yourself to go to Miss Colombia. And you can imagine at 18 years old, I mean, they start at 17, 18, telling me to that I have to represent Miss Bogota, which is the capital of Colombia, which is a lot of pressure and a lot of, um, you know, um, it, it, it's a good pressure, but sometimes people, you know, um, get want too many things from you. And in the same time, you are very young. Uh, so it's it looks beautiful. But it has, of course, like like life has um, other things that people doesn't see it and realize it. So, for example, this is not everything so beautiful it is. For example, in Colombia, it's very important to be Miss Bogota and Miss Colombia. So um, uh, when you are at that age, uh, many journalists are not so nice to you, you know, and then they, the way how they make put makeup for you they they make you look a little bit too old or or you know beauty I think beauty for me is natural and, and it's, it changed um long time ago it was not like that they just put so much makeup and they're just trying to change you a little bit and um it's beautiful of course I'm very proud and and Miss Colombia gave me a lot of opportunities but um I think it's important to 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 show the, the reality, you know, that that is um is not as beautiful as everybody thinks. It's not bad. I'm I'm not saying it's bad. I was very happy, but it's a lot of um, information for a teenager. I said. Yeah, and I I can imagine that your experience, uh, perhaps you would say, seeing the underbelly of the highest echelons of all things beauty, which Miss Columbia and that whole pageantry realm that feeds into the Miss Universe um, competition, right? If my understanding is correct. Yes. Is okay. Right? So basically when you, yeah, when you practice, there is, um, you, you participate and then um, Miss Columbia is, um, is one contest. Then you arrive to Miss, Miss Universe, Miss War and another pageant. I uh, was Miss Bogota, and um, I arrived a second one, and then the first one was to Miss Universe, and then me, I had to participate for another type of contest. So the Miss World, Miss Beauty, Miss Beauty International, and that the Miss Universe, Miss Colombia that year, uh, she didn't arrive to the 10th finalist of Miss Universe. So basically, I got more um, beauty, beauty patterns that hair. I, I almost participated in 10 different ones. So I was more popular as Miss Colombia at the time because I was seeing more as Miss Colombia than the real Miss Colombia, the one who, who won Miss Universe. So that's why in Italy, when I moved to Italy, because um, I, I, I won a um, uh, contest in Miami, which is Miss Beauty International. And I was supposed to stay in Miami and uh, buy, because I won that contest, um, I was getting um, TV shows in Telemundo, and uh, I don't know if you hear Telemundo in the United States, it's Latin American channels. And um, but then one of the uh, owners of um, Ricardo Guy, which was the best agency at that time um, in Milan, 
um, because it was the Cape, the boom of Cape Moss. He saw me and he really liked me and uh, he gave me the contract and I was supposed to stay in Miami, but then I decided, you know, I'm 19 years old, said, okay, if I'm going to be a model, I want to be a model in, Maya- in Milan, not in Miami. So I decided to leave everything um, and move to Milan. So my life as a Miss uh, was um, short, but at the same time, because he found me as Miss Colombia and I won that contest, uh, when I arrived to Milan, um, I was modeled, but I was uh, known as Miss Colombia. Mm. So you have this immensely entertaining, wild, high emotion, low emotional ride, this roller coaster where you see yeah. the insides, the innards of the beauty realm again at the highest of heights in terms of the echelon that you were in, you were in that space that you were in. And you, through that, I would imagine you get to, you get to lift open the hood of the car, so to speak, and see the engine or the underbelly. And as you were alluding to with these journalists that were not being nice and, and saying things like, you're not pretty enough for whatever they were telling you. So as a setup for this next question here, it, well, let me pause there. Yeah. yeah. Any, any notes on that yeah. before I get to my next question? Yeah, because the thing is that there is two different, as you, as you mentioned, your miss, miss is one thing and model is another thing, right? It's completely two words. So I was taken by miss. A miss uh, is more like a different uh, walking, different attitude. A miss is a completely different word than a model. Model, and at the time that I start, it was not the time of Kate Moss and, uh, sorry, of uh, Cindy Crawford and Naomi Campbell, which was more body and more look, uh, volume, you know, like more shaping like a fit woman, right? Yeah. The time that I started to be model, I was more cataloged as me. And that's why uh, he wants me in his agency because uh, it started the boom of Kate Moss. So Kate Moss was the, I don't want to say the word, but, you know, very, very skinny um, age of era. Uh, as they call it anorexic. It was very bad, uh, but it was, that was the age of how they, all the models wanted to be. So I was more like a commercial, you know, model. But be, be, me as, as, as a since as a Miss, uh, they completely changed me. They said the mod, uh, the booker is like, you are not anymore a miss. You're fat. You cannot walk like that. You cannot be, you're not a miss anymore. You have to get out of this cheap. And, you know, I being, uh, it was not hard, but, you know, at 19 years old, turning 18, as you already left all these journalists that continue telling you you are not doing enough or you have so much um uh you know like um uh it's never enough like that's why it's difficult because beauty is real relative right you cannot be beautiful for everyone we are not gold gold uh, or diamonds that everybody like we are um unique and our beauty is unique and it belongs to us. So we need to be very, um, uh, I'm going to say, very secure of yourself and um, has, have this uh, courage to say, okay, that's the way I'm beautiful. And I know I have to be in shape. I know I have to, because in a model, you need to be, you need to follow some sort of um, status, right? Yeah. But that's me. I mean, I have rest, I have uh, curves. Um, so it was a little bit challenging because arriving to Milan at the time, it was like the food was an enemy for me. Like mm-hmm. they never told me how to eat or how I have to maintain my, my body slim and also because I was a teenager you know from 17 I always have to um, be skinny be skinny because you know I'm very tall as well and um, I'm 182 it's like 5'11 
Hmm. So it's normal, you know. And I was when I was very like I was fifteen or twelve, from twelve to fifteen years old, I was a little bit chubby. <laughs> so I'm all my life trying to be skinny, and and this is things that I I can tell many girls and many women um, are passing through. So I understand them. And so mm. sometimes when you are alone, you just need to have the courage to believe on yourself. And um, and that's why for me is is it became a passion to educate my clients, to educate. I don't see my clients as a, of course, they're my clients, but I want to show them what it works for me. And I had to do this by myself. And um, that's why it's so important also the spiritual, you know, part that to believe on yourself and, and beauty is inside because it reflects outside. Mm. Perfection doesn't exist. Very true. You, you know, beauty, it could be beautiful for you. It could be beautiful for me, but maybe it's not beautiful for another person. So I think that the, the root is to eat healthy, to do exercise. And of course, help you to achieve that goal in a fast, long lasting results, but not as invasive as operations or, you know, we can give another um, ways to, to lose weight in a more healthy way, let's say, you know, that's why I like endospheres a lot and, and the products that I use, I'm very careful too yeah we'll come to that because i do want to uh, i do want to make an observation about the uh from my perspective the theme that seems to be dictating your professional life and maybe even your personal life to some degree which is something i'll come back to but i want to make a note on kate moss because as we're talking yeah. here i can see where this tension would emerge inside of you where and this is on the model side, right? Not the miss side. Yeah, the, the models. Yeah, the models. Right. Yeah. Then, so, they become, so, then they become personal, as you say, of course. Right. Exactly. Because the and the reason I'm gonna draw into this is because this is where, you know, these sort of defining moments where I don't know, someone loses an uncle to cancer and bam, that's the moment they decide, you know what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life? I'm gonna fight for cancer research funding or whatever. And so I think this might have been a defining moment for you. And I want to make an observation. Yeah. You can tell me what you think on this. So looking at uh, Kate Moss's Wikipedia page, because you mentioned her. So Kate Moss yeah. marks, for those that don't know who she is, she was born in 74. She arrove, arrove, <laughs> arrived, <laughs> let me try Arrived. <laughs> My yeah. first language is right No, now. English. Uh, yes. <laughs> arrived at the England, end of from the, England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Arri she arrived at the end of the supermodel era. Da, da 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 She is known for her waifish, okay, keyword there, waifish figure and role in zero size, it's insane, zero size fashion. And if you want to know what waif means, waif is a term that is uh, in pop culture uh, used to describe a very, very, very thin person, usually a woman, um, who has, let's see, da, 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 the wave look was no breath. Yes. Yeah. Thin, large eyes models, such as Twiggy, Eddie Zedwick, uh, et cetera. So very skinny. Here we have Debbie who in 96, the world decided, yeah, she's 97. one of the most beautiful women on this earth. And 98. 98. 98. 98 okay. is when I ever tweeted in 98. <laughs> so for 33% of the decade of the 90s, the world said Debbie is one of the yes. most beautiful human beings that walks this planet. <laughs> and yet there's this conflict because the modeling agencies are saying you're too you're too this, you're too that. You're not beautiful, is what they're effectively communicating with you. And that creates some sort of movement in your psyche, some tension, some sort of oh yeah. And that, and here's the observation I alluded to earlier. That to me, I think is the moment, wherever that one particular moment might have been, where your foot dropped, so to speak. And you said, you know what? I'm going to go about the rest of my life treating for the root cause of beauty. Is that roughly speaking 
even close. Yeah, yeah, more or less, yes, 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 because they don't, they don't educate you, you know, they just tell you not to, not to get your fat, you cannot eat, you cannot eat, but they don't give you the tools, they don't educate or how to eat well and how to eat properly. So yeah. if you are not strong enough to say, okay, I believe in myself, um, I know I cannot eat, but I have to eat right. So I have to investigate what I I have to eat, what type of exercise I have to do, how I can get fit in order to continue with my career. Because at the time I really had to work and I work a lot actually, because it was only me and another girl, uh, which was the uh, commercial models anyway. So we didn't go into Vogue or kind of these because we were we were not that kind of models. Because that kind of model doesn't have breasts, doesn't have, you know, a botox, botox. Uh, they don't have, you know, curves. So we was we were the commercial. Commercial is more underwear, uh, bathing suit, this kind of models. But anyway, they want us to be very, I mean, you know, very skinny. But they don't teach you. They don't educate it. Educate you. So if you that's why for me it's very important to understand that my um, my strength and my spiritual side don't let me go down to have uh, any kind of uh, depression because many of the girls could get the many of my friends got depressed um, they got into bulimia they got into many problems because they, uh, the the food was an enemy and the food is not an enemy the enemy is you. If you allowed your enemy or your demons to go into your head and tell you you are not good enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're fat, you cannot make it, you allowed these voices to control you. So you need to get out of this, um, you know, um, of this side of your, um, you know, listen that side and listen the side that you can make it. Mm -hmm. that you're beautiful enough, that you're positive, there is a weight to keep um, healthy, to eat good, to do exercise and put all your energy and do good things. And that's what Biatala is. That's why I create Biatala. Because all my knowledge from all these years, um, I live in Italy for almost 20 years, and um, allows me to see, uh, you know, make the search of beauty but also creating myself and build myself in strong enough to get out of this society cover or block mm -hmm. that they want to add to you, you know, like a little Barbie thing. <laughs> I don't know, the boxes of Barbie, remember mm -hmm. these boxes of Barbie, mm -hmm. perfect. And yep. um, this is not, this is not what a woman has to be. A woman has to have also voice a woman has to be uh, strong enough to say no this is not what i'm gonna do and this is what i'm not gonna become and a woman also has not to be a wife as long as she wants but if she wants to work she can i mean you know the thing is that we live in a world in a man world and it's nothing to do to be a feminist because a woman is completely different of men and I want to be a woman, and that's, that's why we are different. But sometimes um, it's a woman, it's a man word. And so men think or feel a little bit, this is another story, but men feel a little bit like if you are too, too much woman, they feel less men, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why for me, it's almost a movement. Biatala is more than, um, than, than, um, than a spa or wellness club is 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 awareness is uh is awareness for women and also for men because men now likes a lot the you know taking care of themselves but um, now that we're talking about woman because it was me uh, that's a part of my life that I show it to my clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why they feel even good because, you know, the most important here is when you dedicate your time to your client, you're not selling, uh, I don't know if you can say this word, but like bullshit, 
no you know you're selling real you you see you're selling real results results mm. and that's what i want because my reputation is very important right but i cannot work with you if i teach you i give you all the tools and then you eat big fried chicken <laughs> <laughs> right because otherwise you're not gonna you're yep. not making sense so what I'm trying to see here is to help you to achieve long results as fast as we can, but you also need to help me to learn what are you eating, what is the exercise you're doing, because nothing is magic in life. You know, there is a process that you need to trust in order to evolve into the better version of yourself. And that's what is Bia Tala is all about. Mm. So you arrive at this decision. I am going to, let's just say, treat beauty, for lack of a better way of saying it, at its root cause. And there are th three elements to it. There's the there's the internal. There's the the, the mental realm, which I'm sure you have uh, yourself written out your own affirmations or declarations, whatever that might be. I am beautiful. I am amazing. I am Debbie. I am this. I am that. I am incredible, whatever that might be. And you probably help your customers at least think about doing that themselves. Maybe you even share your own um, declarations or affirmations. You know, myself, I frankly am doing the same thing where I'm building out my own declarations on these white cards, uh, whatever the hell is it? index <laughs> cards. And I'm going to stack them up. It's going to become this big set of declarations. I read it every morning. And that is my operating system. You probably do something similar and suggest that your customers do the same thing. So that's the internal piece. Then we have the external piece, the physical. And there's two components to that, right? There's the, uh, okay, well, we are an algorithm, meaning we are a function, meaning if we input pizza into our face hole, we're going to become not skinny, probably, right? Unless you have the metabolism of a hero and an Olympian, Michael Phelps, yeah. whatever. There's also then the, okay, well, you're here, you're a customer of mine and I can, I can affect your beauty from the external through technology and products and skincare lines, et cetera. So for sake of time, because I think we, we have a uh, 15 or so minutes here left remaining for the show because you have a million people that want to come see you because Biatala <laughs> is the best spa in the galaxy. Go see Debbie. She's incredible. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I think, I, I think I, I, the, the, the secret, yeah. Yeah, t t tell me, sorry to interrupt you here, but tell me how you approached the selecting the products on both sides because you do skincare and you have a tech technology piece as well, Endospheres. How did you decide to arrive on those specifically? Because your guiding ethos is I treat the root cause of things. So I'm curious if that was the filter yeah. you saw this decision through and how you came to arrive at um, your skincare line and your technology as well. Yeah, I think is um, uh, as you say was is 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 very is is it's very important to to mention that what we do is a 360 personalized service. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. So Basically, with a client, when a client arrives, um, we we um, make together um, a certain areas or issues that they want to improve. Right? We are all beautiful, so it's not about beauty. Here is about what is the goals you want to achieve. So, for example, if they show you an area that has a little bit of more fat, um, we can uh, fix that. And it's a way of shaping your body with endospheres, which I personally love. It's, a, it's an equipment that um, I've been using for the past years. Um, I started using it in Italy, where it's um, invented. It's an Italian uh, device that arrives to United States, uh, I think, three years ago, four years ago. I don't know. But before that, I've been using it for so many years. And... To be honest, I really like it because it's not invasive. And um, of course, there is another advances equipments right now, but this one, it lasts for many years being as a shaping. So it, what it does is basically case, um, cure the root of the, of the cellulite. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you are 20, 
25, 26, depends on how you're eating. And what I'm talking about is because in, in Italy, the food is different, right? Mm. Like we are in the United States and the United States foods are different. So teenagers right now in the United States are, are in different shapes because the nutrition. That's why it's so important to know where you're eating and where you're adding into your body. It matters, it matters, it matters if you go in organic, it matters if you're using the right type of, um, you know, skincare, because sometimes we don't know where we are adding and we add in things that it causes you, you know, cancer and, and many certain, many things that I'm not going to go to that because this is more like search of medical, but I can tell it matters. Whatever you eat, whatever are you eating, uh, I'm putting in your body. So saying, saying this, um, I grew up in Italy, basically. I mean, since I'm 19 years old, all my life I was in Italy. And the food in Italy is different. This being said, anyway, I eat pizza, I eat pasta, I eat all the things that we like, that we all love. And so we just need, we can continue eating it. It's just the right portion. So when you go into um, shape one of your areas and you want to treat one of your areas, first of all, you need to understand what you're eating. Then you do 12 or 24 or depends. We, we recommend minimum 12 uh, sessions because 12, it gives you um, re a result, right? Then nothing is magic in life. Then you can come back and you can maintain and do another six every year this is with circle time of cellulite same for time uh, not time um a stage of cellulite so if someone comes at 27 20 years old and gonna start to cure the rate the 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 root of the case of cellulite right but if you're right at 40 you already have have more cellulite or if you are an athlete that, you know, you have just a little and you want to keep on shaving, you know, maintain, it's different. So each of us, each person is unique. So that's why for me it's very important to do 360 personalized service because you are different than me. Each one of us is unique. Mm -hmm. So we cannot treat people as everyone, you know, it's not a number or, or is, is, is each one of us need, for example, there is many that are, that can have any, any problems with the body, they want to treat the, the skin. So I have my brand, uh, Pietro Simone, he is Italian too, and his three lines of uh, cosmetics, uh, sorry, of um, skincare has three, three, three different ones. So one is for more a younger age, the other one is for 40 mature age, and the new one that he got is more into um, uh, problems, issues of his skin, for example, rosacea, acne, and gone, you know. But he's all of peptides, vitamins, stem cells, it's all natural, nothing chemic. You will not find nothing chemic in Via Cala. Even if it's expensive, sometimes many brands are super expensive and doesn't mean because they're super expensive of the best, you know? So you need to be careful with what you're using. It doesn't matter because uh, it's very important to do your search. I always encourage my clients to do a search of their, their products, what they're using. Hmm. So consultations are extremely important with what you do. Extremely. Personalized. Extremely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Extremely, mm -hmm. because you need to know what you're using. For example, many of my clients, of course, um, doesn't mean uh, because you're using a cream that it costs you one thousand dollars, because there are there are clean there are creams that cost you one thousand dollars. One cream doesn't mean that's the best cream. You need to know. You need to know exactly what the ingredients that has, because if most of the ingredients are chemical or has a lot of um, silicon or, you know, 
there is an evolution. It calls biotechnology. Bi biotechnology. Biotechnology means when uh, the, the natural of the ingredients meets the technology. It doesn't need to be with chemicals or with things that are not natural, you know? For example, Pietro um, has five different elements that he used in his, all his things are patent or his methods are patent. Even the way he do the facials and um, uh, the massages are patent. For example, we have a facial that is um, with cotton thread. The method is a patent by him and it, it takes the first layer of your skin, your dead skin. And it's not invasive as the dermapenning. Anyway, the dermapenning is another thing. But it's kind of the same, but more holistic, you know? It's not so invasive. That's why I like also endospheres, because endospheres is not as invasive as another one. Mm. This being said, uh, there is another equipment that are very good too. It's just that my um my way my my way to see my clients is is advise them to do more um um natural mm. you know not so drastic yeah but it doesn't matter you can go to a spa med spa and, and find another results too it's just that you know that it is an evolution right it's step by step Completely agree. So there's two two closing questions I want to ask you here. Yes. Yeah. Number one is what would you attribute Biatala's success to? Now, for the listeners, Biatala, if you haven't figured that out, that is Debbie's spa. And Atala means butterfly. Be yeah. Atala means be as a butterfly. So actually, yeah. three questions. I'm a dirty liar. My apologies. <laughs> the first question is, <laughs> be Atala, what is the significance of that that word Atala, the idea of the butterfly to you as it pertains to your life mission? And yeah. um, and B, to what do you attribute your success of be Atala to? I think, okay, this is a very good question. The first one, Atala is a butterfly. It's a species of a butterfly. Uh, that really the name is Emmaus Atala which am I remind, remind us to the spiritual side, no religion, but to the spiritual, to be to believe in yourself, right? To connect to something divine. And because this will help you a lot to achieve many things. And then second of all, Atala is, I see ourselves as caterpillars. We all are a little caterpillars that sometimes we are into dark days and lighty days. We don't know where we are, but, if we trust the process, sometimes we're gonna make it. And then in the moments that this caterpillar thought she's gonna die, actually she's she was transforming herself into a beautiful butterfly. Mm. So sometimes I see it of myself and I always tell my clients that no matter what the situation, no matter your sex, no matter where are you coming from, tomorrow is another day, you know? You don't live in the past. We're past. What happened in the past, past already. Is this is we live in the in the present, and um, the the butterfly doesn't wake up being a butterfly. <laughs> you know, she she passed a process. So we need to have patience. We need to uh, believe on that you know um, process, mm -hmm. and um, no matter if we are in a very difficult. Sometimes the difficult moment in our life is a blessing too because we are becoming the better version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And also another thing is environment. It's very important. If you are in an environment where, let's say, for example, we're going to talk about nutrition. If you're in an environment, you're a client and you want to be as healthy as you can to show your, your kids to be healthy because if you cure the root of the case on your kids at the beginning your kids not gonna eat fried chicken all the time or on um, burgers all the time on fried chicken you know uh, fried potatoes i just say fried chicken because i know americans love fried chicken 
<laughs> it's like hamburger is like the the, mm -hmm. the special plate in the United States, you know. Mm -hmm. um, in Italy, it's like pizza, pasta, and spaghetti, but it's more Mediterranean. So it doesn't matter. Carbs are not bad. It's just the I think our I don't want to say something like um, the sugar, sugar and fries are very risky because it, it, it gets a lot of, you know, um, it's not good for our health, let's say like that. Mm -hmm. So um, being said about Atala is like the process of, you know, um, a butterfly that uh, not change because we're not changing, we're transforming, we are evolving. Um, that's what we, I, I like it to call. And then the second question was what? Uh, well, actually, I want to change. I want to change the second question just a little bit, and uh -huh. and uh, we'll land uh -huh. a plane on the other side of this. So, there are listeners in the audience, viewers uh -huh. in the audience, on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever, and mm -hmm. they're wondering how in the heck did Debbie build a profitable spa with literally just two. You have two, oh no, you have the um, the facials as well, but effectively you have like yeah. three, um, you have two products and a service from what I can gather. Like you don't have a big hyper diversified, we have a thousand treatments. You do like three things. And, yeah. and the two, the, the, the two products you have are Endospheres and, um, Peter Simone, it's Simone is his pronunciation. Yeah. Right? Pietro Simone. Simone. Yes. Pietro, okay. Pietro, Pietro Simone. Simone. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So I, <laughs> I want, I want your, if you're willing to share your unrestrained feedback on both Indospheres and P, uh, Pierte, Pietro, Pietro, Pietro Simone. Pietro. Okay. Yes. Both products, because there are people in the audience thinking, wait a minute, I don't understand. I have 20 treatments, 20 services, 20 products. She has like three and she's crushing it compared to me. So what is your feedback on those two products in particular, Indospheres and um, the skincare line? And then maybe who are they for? Because people are thinking, I want to do what she did because I have 100 services and I'm going insane. I think uh, you should do, I will, I will not compare myself with anyone, first of all, but I think we are all unique. So what I'm thinking is what I want to do, I want to do it right. Even if I have two things, but these two things have to be rocking it. So I also can say that I'm in a mistressy hotel, which is Italian too. It's a Cipriani uh, hotel, which is in Cocono Grove. It's a leaning hotel in the world. And Cipriani is a trademark for nine years. I don't know if you're familiar with Cipriani brand. I'm going to plead the fifth on this one. Nothing seen there. No, nothing here. Maybe, maybe one of uh, many, many of our of the, of the people that are listening to us knows who is Cipriani. Cipriani is a family uh, that has ninety years of tradition and is one of the most famous and renowned families uh, restaurants on uh, in the world. And I don't know if you remember Harry's Bar in Venice. Harris Bar in Venice, uh, he invented actually the Bellini. You know the mm. drink Bellini? Of course. You know Bellini, right? You can Google it. It was invented by Gi Giuseppe Cipriani. Mm. And he called it Bellini because uh, Bellini was, uh, sorry, I have a um, uh, client. Um, a Bellini is a drink that he invented um, because of Giovanni Bellini. Uh, it was um, um, an artist and um, also he invented the carpaccio. Um, Salvatore Dali, uh, Picasso, uh, Ernest Hemingway were, were going to his place in Venice and he's very, he was very famous and um, he was one of the princes. I, it was not uh, Grace, uh, Grace Kelly, but Chris Kelly was going there, was on all other princes. He wanted to cook for her because the mother, her wife, so the grandmother of Giuseppe Cipriani, which is Giuseppe Cipriani himself, um, was cooking also. So there was a family business. So uh, he invented the carpaccio because he wanted to give the princess, um, he wanted to taste uh, the raw meat. So 
he wanted to do a plate for road meat for a princess. So he made the cut, very thin cut. And he put the sauce and he called it carpaccio. So I can tell I'm very blessed because I mean, all my technology is Italian. My uh, friend, I'm friends with the family for many years. I was doing the public relations for them for 10 years for Cipriani in Miami. I basically opened uh, the restaurant with them. And I know them, I know Giuseppe since 20 years too. And um, they're, um, you know, the type of life um, of um, exclusivity and service is very important because to serve is to love. Mm. You don't come here to be safe. You come here in a world to serve people. And that's something that is um, very important to me. And uh, his father, Arigo, Arigo Cipriani and Giuseppe Cipriani, and his kids, which are the owners uh, of the entire own, Mr. C is Mr. Cipriani. So it's two corporations, Cipriani and Mr. C, which is Mr. C Cipriani. And Mr. C is um, a brand which has hotels and residents in New York, in Miami, and in uh, Los Angeles, in Beverly Hills. So um, um, it doesn't mean that because of that, but I have a mix of all the things together, which is called a luxury. But in the same time, I have only one treatment room, as you as you see it. I just pick where we would be the best of the best of my results long the term. And I want to show, I want to just the result who I am. I'm 45 years old. And um, I, I can't, I don't use as much as Botox. Botox, I'm not going to say something good. I'm not going to say something bad. I just... Is 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 botox is a toxin, you know. You're you you're putting you're adding into your skin. So long the term, you're adding adding adding. At the same time, you are evading. You're just adding things into your beauty. And beauty is is natural. It's beautiful. It's you. Just fix a little bit. Try to keep yourself and evolve into the best version of yourself meaning you exercise so i think that's that's the reason why biatala is so famous and it is not famous <laughs> people like it because um when i treat a client i treat the client 360 degrees so i i, I take the time to my client together to achieve to a goal and Pietro has three different um, um, skincare pro product uh, lines. So I'm more focused on facials. Mm -hmm. Then I have endosphere. And then um, I have nutrition. I have activities, sports activities. And then um, it becomes a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Biatala is a brand which is, um, you know, growing in Mr. C. And... Um, is gonna grow more because we are gonna open in Mr. C residence. So yes, it, it grows not because only you have to be good in something, not in many. Hmm. Make sense? Which I think is a fantastic place to close out today's show. <laughs> Predominantly because you have people literally waiting to see you in the treatment room. So I'm gonna let you get, um, this has been incredible. <laughs> Debbie, you are lovely. You are Thank phenomenal. You. Thank there, you. Of course, there are people in the audience that are thinking, I want to connect to Debbie and be her friend or connect with her on Instagram or see her website or come get a treatment, et cetera, et cetera. Where can they find you? What's the best way? Yes, the best way is www.beatala.com. Uh, also, I have an online shop for buying all the products. And also, I have a sport wear. Um, uh, active wear uh, is www.biatalawellness.com and also we have the Instagram which is uh, my personal Deb Castaneda which you can you know reach to me and also Biatala Instagram and Biatala Sport Wear Active Wear Sport Wear
And I hope you can come one day, Austin, and try it yourself. Yes. And then you can come back and, and show your beautiful skin. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Well, be as a butterfly audience members. You are loved. Be loving. Be love. And go love the world and change the world, just like Debbie is doing. As I'm sure you all are already doing your heroes you thank you no and then i really appreciate i want to thank you because i really appreciate what you're doing because i want to congratulate myself with you because you're you're doing something very 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 nice because you're bringing people you're bringing um it's like um uh you know deep in searching you know like a dipping into the real what is beauty what is beauty to you and what is matters and that's what important, you know. The important is to to show that not only the products as the device itself is good, but also you need to have the people who is trained and, and you know and dedicate with passion what they're doing. Because if there is no passion in what you're doing, that's not gonna work. T R U T H truth. Truth, truth, truth. Debbie, I appreciate you being on today. I do not want to hold your clients up because they're dying to see you. They're no. so excited. They're eager. They're banging on no, the doors. They're, they're clawing at the door. So. I have one client coming. So, but thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank of you. Course. Thank you. And I hope you, I hope you like it. And uh, I hope all your the people that are listening, we can do another day if you want to have questions from many people or another, you know. And they want me to, you know, help them in some way. I'm here. I'm supportive. And what I want is that we all grow because we are different. So if I can help someone in their business, I'm here. Anyway, whatever you want, um, I'm here for, for you and for all the people that are listening to us. Amazing. And with that, Debbie just broke the internet because now every listener in America is going to be calling her. I want to talk to you, Debbie. So uh, there you go. You. <laughs> All right, Debbie. Well, you be well. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll see you later Thank on. You. Thank Bye -bye. you. Austin. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.